John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Jack Loring, Johnny. You'll have an easy time earning your money on this one. All you have to do is fly up to Sault Ste. Marie and sit around looking important while the Coast Guard does all the work. All the work on what? Why, a fellow by the name of Carl Richards set off a bomb on an ore boat, the Hampton Queen. Damages amount to some $56,000. We're covering the Hampton shipping lines on it. Well, if the Coast Guard's handling it, what do you want me there for? Just a formality. Richards disappeared after the explosion. Only quite some time before the Coast Guard picked him up. There won't be anything for you to do. A real snap. Yeah, I've heard that before. But somehow it never turns out that way. At this point in our program, I'd like to give you something to think about. Probably one of the most quoted Americans in our nation's history is Benjamin Franklin. It was Franklin who said, Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And never leave that till tomorrow, which you can do today. And, of course, the Lord helps them that help themselves. But probably one of his most familiar quotations is, There are only two things in life of which we may be certain. Death and taxes. Of course, what bothers most of our taxpayers is that death and taxes don't come in that order. But seriously, one of the biggest jobs handled by the Secretary of the Treasury is the collection of taxes, our government's main source of income. The government raises money through the Bureau of Internal Revenue, which collects income taxes, excise taxes, amusement taxes, and other federal taxes. The Bureau also checks to see that you haven't paid too little and, believe it or not, that you haven't paid too much. Another way the government raises money is through the Bureau of Customs, which levies taxes on imports which are sent here from foreign countries. But although the Treasury Department collects the money, it is Congress, the men we send to Washington, who actually says who will pay taxes and how much. And that's one thing from which none of us can escape. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Worldwide Maritime and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is the counting of expenditures during my investigation of the Hampton Line matter. Expense account item one, $56.30. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. My Coast Guard contact was the Commander Winters. After checking in at the Sioux Hotel, I made my way to Coast Guard headquarters to meet him. Well, glad to have you aboard with us, Mr. Dollar. Another hand is always welcome here. Well, thanks, Commander. But uh, I have no intention of stepping on official toes. Not a chance. We're happy to have any assistance. Have you been briefed on the situation? Well, I understand that Carl Richards seems to be the number one suspect. Well, so far the evidence seems to point that way. Richards operates a supply and trading boat on the lakes. Yesterday at about 1,300, he contacted the Hampton Queen near Lookout Point. Ten minutes after he shoved off, the explosion took place. Anything unusual about the manner of contact? Yes. Those oil boats stop for nothing. So the supplies are usually pulled aboard by line as the two boats proceed abreast. The time Richards came up to Jacob's ladder himself. Any particular reason why? Well, Captain Torgerson, the Queen, couldn't give us any. Said Richards spoke to him briefly, went below decks for maybe five minutes, came up again and went over the side. And the explosion took place below deck? Yes in a utility compartment just about the engine room. Did Richards bring any package aboard that might have held explosives? Captain Torgerson didn't notice any. Richards was wearing a great coat, pretty bulky. Might have had something underneath it. Uh-huh. Anything else to connect him with the explosion? One of the engine room hands saw him in that utility compartment. Nobody else was noticed down there. Then, of course, there's his disappearance. What's the dope on that, Commander? Well, after the supply boat shoved off from the Queen, it made no further contact. But it didn't pull into the docks until 2300 last night. When it did, Richards was not aboard. Well, who brought the boat in? His daughter, Elsa. She operated the boat with him. She claims she didn't know how her father got out of the boat, where he got out, or where he is right now. And she defies us to bring some kind of charge against her. 
It's very interesting, Commander. But so far, there's one big hole right in the middle of the picture. Yes, I know. Motive. Is there any? Not that we can find. Richards has operated that supply boat over 20 years. Been an honest, law-abiding citizen with an excellent reputation. Haven't found one person who's got a bad word to say against him. If he did set off that explosion, the big question is, why? Yeah. But I've got a hunch I'm going to earn my money getting the answer. The Richard supply boat was a powerfully built all-weather water bug, about 65 feet in length, tied up at a private dock not too far from the Coast Guard station. The deck was crowded with miscellaneous crates and cartons that seemed to contain everything from clean laundry, oranges, and sacks of cement to bouquets of fresh flowers. I couldn't see anyone around, so I hopped aboard and headed toward the small cabin up forward. Before I reached it, however, the cabin door opened. Yes? What is it? Are you Miss Richards? That's right. Who are you? My name is Johnny Dollar. I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Dollar. Well, how do you know? I haven't told you what I'm here for yet. It's about my father and the Hampton Queen, isn't it? It's got something to do with that, yes. And I have nothing to say. The truth never hurt an innocent man. You're not interested in the truth. You've got a job to do. Get the man who tried to blow up the Hampton Queen. Now I've got work to do, Mr. Dollar. If you're all through wasting our time, suppose you shove off. Well, that sounds like as good an idea as any. You carry quite a mixed cargo, don't you, Miss Richards? Sailors on our boats don't have much chance to get ashore. They need a lot of things. Yeah, I suppose. But uh, I was wondering about that crate over there on the starboard side. What about it? What would a sailor on an oar boat want with blasting powder? <laughs> Expense account item two, 75 cents. Cab fare to the Shoreview Hotel. I found Captain Torgerson on the hotel veranda looking out over the endless parade of boats plowing their way up and down the lake. I don't know what you're coming around asking me questions for, Mr. Dollar. I don't know where Carl Richards is. Well, the explosion took place on your boat, Captain. Yes. Richards was aboard some ten minutes before the blast went off. So? Well, I thought you might be able to give me some idea why he did it. Well, who said he did? You don't think so? I know he didn't. Why not? That's the Robert McNally downbound, signaling for the locks. Eighteen minutes late this trip. If he gets the Shelby in a Davis lock instead of the MacArthur, Bob McNally's going to be hopping. Yeah, why is that? The MacArthur empties in ten minutes. Past the getaway. I see. Uh, we were talking about Carl Richards. I've known him 25 years now. Know the man inside and out. He didn't do it. And why did he come aboard the Hampton Queen? I didn't say any idea why he went below deck? No. Well, it seems to me you'd be curious. I figure a man's business is his own till he decides to share it with someone else. That's all you've got to say? Well, we might think about a couple of things. Oh, I'll be glad to. The blast went off in an empty storage compartment. Buckled a few plates, broke some oil lines. Going to tie us up in dry dock for maybe a week, ten days. Uh-huh. If somebody wanted to do some real damage, the engine room's only a step away. Could have knocked out a whole bank of diesel with the same powder. Something to think about, Dollar. Yeah. Well, what was the other thing? Carl Richards came to the Sioux 25 years ago. Married, started this supply boat business, raised a family. In all that time, he never said a bad word against anybody. Never cheated a man out of a penny. Lived a sober, industrious life. What could a man like that set off a charge of powder aboard a noble for? I'll trade one of my questions for yours, Captain. Oh, what is it? Why did he disappear? I spent the rest of the afternoon talking to neighbors, dockhands, sailors, and canal workers. Everyone agreed with Captain Torgerson's opinion of Carl Richards. And outside of that, I came up with nothing. (laughs) 
By the time I got back to Coast Guard headquarters, it was getting dark. Commander Winters was still on duty. Well, how have you been making out, Mr. Dollar? Well, I'm beginning to feel less like an investigator and more like a persecutor with every stop I make, Commander. Yes, I know. Couldn't ask for a finer reputation than Richards has had in the suit for the past 25 years. But then our job's not to judge him, just to apprehend him. Yeah. Anything new at this end? Not a thing. Still no trace of him. What's Elsa Richards been doing? She took the supply boat out this afternoon, made a number of routine contacts with all boats, got back to the dock about half an hour ago. Nothing suspicious or untoward about any of them. Well, that's a big help. Uh-huh. Now, come in. Commander from our station at Three Harbors, Mark Legend, sir. Thanks, Jenkins. Well, I'll leave you to your duties, Commander. Wait, just a minute, Mr. Stoller. I have the seaplane stand by for takeoff, Jensen. Aye, aye, sir. You got to fly to Three Harbors with me, Dollar? What's up, Commander? One of the Hampton boat guards caught a man trying to sneak aboard. There was a gunfight, and the man was killed. I don't suppose they identified him as Carl Richards. They did. Yeah, I'll fly up with you, Commander. Our first stop was the Richards supply boat, where we picked up Elsa. When we got to the Coast Guard landing docks, the four-place seaplane was ready, and we took off for Three Harbors, Minnesota. Elsa didn't speak during the flight and showed no emotional reaction when we put down at the Hampton Line docks and made our way to the guard office. Commander Winters? That's right. I'm Bill Fraser, Commander, the guard who shot that suspect earlier this evening. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Fraser. This is Miss Richards, Mr. Dollar. How are you, Mr. Fraser? Dollar. Sorry we had to meet under these circumstances, Miss Richards. Where is he, Mr. Fraser? We have a day room back here. In here, Miss Richards. Do you mind if I go in alone first? No, it's not at all. Thank you. Yeah, it's real rough. I wasn't expecting to run into Richards' daughter. You made a positive identification? Yeah, I got a wallet in the desk over here. Has the usual identification cards in it, driver's license, the rest of it. Uh, what were the circumstances, Mr. Fraser? Oh, I was standing the night watch when I saw this dinghy trying to sneak in under the stern. I hailed it and got a shot in return for my troubles. Fired back, got a lucky hit. Any explosive in the dinghy? Yeah, blasting powder. When I saw that, I thought of Carl Richards. When I got him ashore, we found proof. Uh-huh. Well, that seems to tie this one up, Mr. Donner. We may never know why Richards was doing it, but there's no doubt now that he was. It looks like it, Commander. Does that mean you have some reservations? No, not particularly. I'm just wondering why he was up here in Three Harbors. Well, outside of the Sioux, it's the closest point to the Canadian border. Might have been intending to head there after he got through. Oh, excuse me. Hampton line. Oh, yes, just a moment, please. It's for you, Commander. Thanks. Commander Winters. Where did it happen? Okay, send a cutter out. We'll be there as quickly as possible. You're not through any against Dollar. More trouble? Yes. One of the Hampton boats. Another explosion below decks. Second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. It took us approximately two hours to make it to Parisian Island in the Hampton boat, the James K. She was limping along at about three knots, and we had no trouble putting down alongside and getting aboard. The James K.'s skipper, Captain Hartzell, took us below decks for a look at the damage. Here's where the blast went off. Most of the damage can find between these bulkheads. Some water's coming in, but pumps have it under control. We'll make the sue without any trouble. Engine room's right over there, isn't it? That's right. 
This is just an auxiliary compartment. Well, there's no question about the setup being identical to the Hampton Queen. Yeah. What are these pipes up here, Captain? Auxiliary fuel and water. The blast came from inside. Well, you think the explosive was inside that pipe? Well, I'd say it's a good possibility. Well, Sam Tyler ever comes around, he'll be able to tell us. Who's he? Abel Seaman. He was in here when the blast took place. Your cutter took him to the hospital at the Sioux. Was he badly hurt? Pretty bad. Anything else you want to know? I've got to take over the bridge. We're getting to the locks pretty soon. How about it, Dollar? I can't think of a thing. Two in the morning when we got back to Sault Ste. Marie. The hospital told us the seaman, Sam Tyler, was still unconscious and in critical condition. I figured I'd done enough to earn my keep for one day, so I went back to the hotel and turned in. Expense account item three, one dollar. Country-style breakfast at the Sioux Hotel Cafe. After my third cup of coffee... I put a call through to Commander Winters at Coast Guard headquarters. Well, we just got a report that they finished the Richards inquest in three harbors. Didn't take them long, did it? No. Nope. Verdict was justifiable homicide. Miss Richards set the services for this afternoon. We may have to disappoint her. Why is that, Donna? I don't like that rush inquest, Commander. Suppose we see what an autopsy surgeon has to say. <laughs> I spent the rest of the morning going over the Richard supply boat. I didn't know what I'd hoped to find, so when I finished, I wasn't disappointed. There was nothing aboard that clarified a thing for me. Back at the hotel, I found a message to call Jack Loring in Hartford. I put the call through. Say, what's going on there, Johnny? You falling asleep on the job? You wouldn't have thought so at two this morning. It's ten this morning I'm worried about. We've got a report that another of the Hampton boats is damaged. You got it straight, Jack. Well, holy smoke, Johnny. We sent you out there to do a job. Oh, is that so? I thought it was just a formality while the Coast Guard did all the work. Never mind that. Let's get some action. We can't stand any more of these claims piling up. Now I had the Hampton line tie up all their ships at the dock. Can't take a chance on any more of these things happening. Well, cancel your order, Jack. What do you mean, cancel it? What difference does it make if those ships are tied up or sailing the lake? I don't know yet, but it may. And I hope I'm going to find out within 24 hours. Now will you cancel it? Okay, Jack. 24 hours. Now, one minute more. Another call to the Sioux Hospital brought the same information as before. Sam Tyler was still unconscious, his condition unchanged. A call to Commander Winters got me equally as far. They had no report on the autopsy, and nothing else had turned up. I went down to the dry dock where they had the James K in for repairs and contacted Captain Hartzell. Oh, Carl Richards hadn't been aboard the James K for close to three weeks. He made the downbound run to Erie. Time he came back, loaded up and headed toward the Sioux again. Yeah, it must have been at least three weeks. You didn't see Elsa Richards either? No, the supply boat usually contacts us at lookout point on the downbound run. But we hadn't reached there when that thing blew up below decks. Uh-huh. You have to turn in a checklist of all men aboard for the Union, don't you, Captain? Yeah, that's right. Do you mind if I have a copy of it? No, glad to. Don't see what you're going to get out of it, though. I'm not sure I do, either. I made my way next to the Hampton Queen to get a similar list from Captain Torgerson. He wasn't around, but his first mate supplied me with one. It took about ten minutes to compare them, find what I was looking for, and take the information over to Commander Winters. 
Is that why you brought me the checkoff sheets, Dollar? To look for any similarity in the personnel? That's right, Commander. Well, as far as I can see, there isn't any. Unless you're talking about that business of the cargo supers, but they have different names. Yeah, but on both boats, the man who's signed on is listed as substitute or replacement. Do you think that's more than mere coincidence? Well, if it's coincidence, it's one too many for me. What do you mean? The man who originally signed on and then was replaced on both boats was Bill Fraser. Yes, sir? Get me our station at Three Harbors. Took about a half hour for Three Harbors to come back with the requested information. It supplied us with more information than we gathered in all the hours since I first hit the Sioux. Well, you were right about the autopsy, Dollar. Carl Richards died from drowning, not from gunshot wounds. They were fired after death. Hmm. What about Elsa? She chartered a private plane right after her autopsy request came in and took off for the Sioux. And Bill Fraser? His replacement on the Hampton Queen was involuntary. And he asked for a relief of duty to serve as guard when the James K. shoved off. Have they put him under arrest? We were a little late. Yeah, why is that? Seems his testimony for the inquest was taken through deposition. He sailed aboard the Agnes Hampton at 2100 last night. We started to move fast, heading for the Richard Supply Boat and Elsa Richard. We learned she'd shelled off and headed out into Lake Superior two hours before. Twenty minutes later, we were in the Coast Guard plane heading out after her. Looks like it'll be a close one, Dollar. You better make it, Commander. Well, you figure it'll happen if you don't. She'll make contact, Fraser will get aboard, and they'll be off for Canada. Where'd you get the hunch, Dollar? The booby traps tipped me off, Commander. The way those auxiliary oil pipes exploded from the inside. There had to be some reason for it. No, I suppose it makes sense. Fraser was bringing in contraband from Canada, concealed in those oil lines. The booby trap gimmick was perfect. If anybody got suspicious and tried to investigate, the evidence was destroyed. Yeah. And the supply boat made the perfect tie-up. One contact each downbound trip is all they needed. Do you think Carl was in on it? No, I doubt it. I think he was trying to cover up for his daughter. Probably set a delayed fuse aboard the Queen to destroy the evidence. And then she and Fraser... Yeah... Nice speed. We boarded the Agnes Hampton without sighting Elsa or the supply boat. They told us Frazier was still aboard. And two minutes later, we were in the companionway leading to the storage compartment beside the engine room. No good, Frazier. You better come out. Not a chance. Either you come out or we come in after you. Better make it easy on yourself. <laughs> you take one more step on blowing the ship sky high. The bluff won't work, Frazier. Those charges aren't big enough. Not this time, Dollar. I got a real charge in here now. I figured something like this might happen, and I'm taking no chance. Do you think he's bluffing? I don't know. If you think I'm kidding, just come on in here and try to dig me. Now, why don't you be smart and go on above deck? What if we do, Frazier? You can't get off the boat with that stuff. Uh, you hear of the Bangalore torpedo dollar? Yeah. Well, that's what I've got right here. I can attach both ends of this pipe, take the explosive and the stuff, and walk off this boat carrying him in my hand. Anybody tries to stop me, I'll just pull the string. Looks like he's got a stymie. Oh, maybe not. If this boat's like the James K. and the Queen, he can't reach the auxiliary pipes from where he's standing. In order to get to him, he has to expose himself. It'll only be for a fraction of a second. Well, maybe that'll be long enough. I can keep talking. I'm going to edge my way up and try to take him. You can't shoot, Dollar. A ricochet could send it off. Yeah, I uh, thought of that. What are you guys chinning about? You got enough to talk over? 
There's only one place for you to go, and that's the bus deck. We still think you might be bluffing, Fraser. Go ahead and prove it. Come on in here and see what's going to happen. Now, look. Elsa Richards hasn't even got here with the supply boat yet. She may never get here. Ever think she might be playing it safe, heading for Canada by herself? That's a lousy bluff, Commander. With the stuff we got here, she's not going to take any run out powder on me. She knows she won't. All right, Major, hold it. I warn you, Dollar. You all right, Dollar? Yeah, yeah, fine, Commander. Oh, that deserves a nicely done commendation if I ever heard one. You got to him just in time. That's the trouble. I didn't. What? He got to the pipe before I reached him. Pretty lucky it turned out to be a dud. Expense account item four, thirty-nine dollars and forty cents, hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item five, sixty-one dollars and ten cents, airfare back to Hartford. Expense account total, one hundred fifty-eight dollars and fifty-five cents. Remarks. As it turned out, Elsa Richards had run out on Fraser. The Canadian authorities picked her up six hours after she landed. She's already waived extradition and is heading toward the Sioux in custody. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? During the Black Hawk War in 1832, he volunteered for service and was made captain of his company. As a member of Congress in 1847, he was opposed to the Mexican War. He also opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Bill, which favored the extension of slavery. During this time, he was offered the governorship of the Oregon Territory, but refused it. Over six feet tall and not particularly good-looking, he was known for his droll sense of humor. If you don't have his name by now, here's an important clue. His unexpected acceptance of an invitation to attend the dedication of a soldier cemetery was responsible for one of the greatest speeches in our history. Who was he? Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. <laughs> Truly, Johnny Dollar stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jim Gusser as Jack Loring, Hi Aberback as Commander Winters, Lee Patrick as Elsa Richards, Ed Begley as Captain Torgerson, Clayton Post as Captain Hartzell, and Hal March as Bill Fraser. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.